Hello you. Good morning. May peace be upon you. Today we are going to talk about concept. There are three domains of learning: knowledge, skill, and attitude. Concept is the building block of knowledge, as script is the building block of skill. It's the building block of knowledge in the brain how the information is stored in the brain. Let's understand. For example, this is truth. The track athlete Usain Bolt ran the fastest ever 100 meter in 9.58 seconds at the World Championship in 2000. In 2009, that was a breaking news. And obviously, no one ever had ran 100 meters in less than 10 seconds. Let us say, I'm just concentrate on this. Track is a concept, athlete is a concept. Let us say, if you do not know or don't understand the concept of track, the concept of athlete, and you want to communicate the same information, then how would you communicate? You can communicate the prepared course for athletes, athlete to same goal, ran. Now, if you say there, there are words in it. Athlete is a concept. So therefore, Athlete is a concept. So what you have to do is, if you do not have a concept of athlete, then what you are going to do? How are you going to communicate? The prepared course for athletes, a person who is proficient in sport, who sand ball ran, or in better English, a person who is proficient in sports and runs on a prepared course for the athlete, who sand ball ran. There are many concepts in it. Person is a concept. Profession is a concept. Sports is a concept. Now if you have to tell the same information, possibly you have to talk like this. The ready for use, aid your land, set aside and prepare for racing for a person who is profited in sport or sandboard or in better English. In an area set aside and prepared for racing that was ready for use for a person who is proficient in sports named Usain Bolt. You understand? The information which was to be given in two words is now being given in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30 words. And you never know, there are concepts over here if you don't have not clear. One has to again use more words to communicate. So how to deal with the bewildering array of information which we are receiving in form of words? Matthew Rips said one major way to deal with the bewildering array of information in the world is to form categories. Categories, class, or division of things regarded as having particular shared characteristics. So, category is something which has shared characteristics which are similar. And that something is a concept. Concept is a mental structure. Meaning by, it exists in the mind. One can't see it. One cannot dissect the ray and pinpoint that these neurons contain the concept or these neurons constitute the concept. Objects or events are grouped together on the basis of perceived similarities. Those that fit the categories are examples of the concept. 
the similar features across the examples of a concept are called attributes. Similar features essential to defining a concept are called defining attributes. Let me give you an example. It's a hypothetical example. Let us say, I say bird. Well, bird is a concept. Then I think, what birds have common? The birds have common is, they have a beak, they have wings, they have tail, they can fly, they have feathers. Since they are common characteristics, so therefore, these are the attributes. Then I might ponder and say, out of all these attributes, and there are certain things which must be present to call something a bird, that could be wings, that could be fly. So that will constitute defining attributes. There are two ways a concept is taught or there are three things essential while teaching a concept or learning a concept. One is discovering the defining attributes that is those six characteristics which should be present to call it that thing. Rules are rules that relate the attributes to another. Then examples of the instances in which defining attributes are present and out of those examples or instances a typical prototype. Prototype example a highly typical instance of the concept. How to identify and acquire a concept is there are two ways either through instruction or through experience. Through instruction means through teaching, which is a teacher centered approach, or through experiences, student centered approach. In this, teacher is taking the main role, in this, student is taking the main role, and teacher is in the back seat facilitating the process by which a concept is being discovered. Teacher is centered is, is the teacher who first tells the defining attributes, tells the rules, and then tells the example and the prototype example. This is rule, example, strategy. Name of the concept, the word, defining attribute, example. It could be reverse also which will be example rule the students are shown examples and then they are asked to kindly find out the similarities in them they become the defining attributes they become the defining attributes and once they discover the defining attributes then the name of the concept is told to them example defining attributes name Obviously, this is a better way than this way. When the students in the lower classes, possibly this is better, but for more mature students, this is definitely a better way to learn or teach a concept. Why misconceptions are called? Why there are alternate conceptions? There are many reasons for that. What is happening now? This boy says multiplying always makes a number bigger. Other says multiplying by, by a fraction makes a number smaller. Others say if you multiply with zero, the number doesn't become zero. Why? They have different concepts of multiplying. One of the reasons is It was not taught by using a known method like rule example, 
which has been identified by research and effective. The teacher might be teaching concept that the teacher feels like. Another important way it is, it's a common misconception, but it's always been three fishes. Communication. This is the grid. You see, this is the genie, and one says, I want fishes and become fishes, so on and so forth. One of the reasons of misconception is if the communication between the learner and the one who is learning and teaching is defective, may that be verbal or may that be non verbal. Arise from the use of words that mean one thing in science and quite another thing in everyday, everyday talking. Words like power, wave, and field can have very different meanings used in science class versus everyday life. And that can cause misconception. That is called as vernacular misconception. Let me give you an example in medical education. For example, skill. In English, skill means to do something well. There is medical education. In domain of learning, skill it means psychomotor skill. Same. You take what syllabus. In English language, syllabus means a course. A curriculum. Whereas in medical education, the syllabus means list of topics. What do you think of them? What is the thought? What is your belief after seeing them? One may say modest, one may say covering it because of COVID. Other concept could be beautiful eyes. Belief effects the concepts. If somebody is a schema which is square like this, which actually is, and I have to teach someone, look, rectangle is very really easy to understand. If we hold the square and stretch it, a rectangle will form. Let us say, if somebody's schema of a square is this, what he will understand? A rectangle like this. So therefore, it is important while teaching and learning to have correct schema and to find out what schemas are in the mind of the patient relevant to teaching and correct it before proceeding further. Huh. If these are the people of the students' eyes, then obviously they are not attentive to what I am teaching them. Attention. Since attention is the mental energy which is required to register the information, put it to long term memory, to understand the things. So obviously, if attention is not there, the chances of getting misconception become very high. What is this? Somebody say, Somebody concept could be, oh, two faces. Other concept could be, no, it's a wash. His concept of this figure is six, his concept of the figure is nine. Perception, that affects concept. Preconceived notions, for example, if somebody has a notion, the one who talks have a mouth, that preconceived notion. Okay, whenever we are going to use talk, there is going to be going to mouth. Anyone who tells is a mouth, but it could have other meanings also in sentences and context. So the he says, your analysis does not conform to the preconceived notions. So my gut instinct is telling me. That you're wrong. And he says, when your gut talks to you, what does it use for mouth? Misconceptions. Non scientific beliefs taken as a misconception, as she says, 
the hammer will fall fastest because it has a bigger mass. Science is something else. So many times, non-scientific beliefs cause a misconception. Like, for thousands of years, it was thought the Earth is in the center and the planets of solar system revolve around it. A misconception. Fact is superstitious. This cat is asking, because the concept is, whenever you see a cat, once you turn away, it's causing bad luck. Even superstitions can call misconception. It's an interesting topic. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day. Pleasant life. See you again. Bye-bye.